is up guys welcome to the think computers weekly tech podcast this is episode 329 and our podcast is brought to you by amazon if you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash amazon and happen to purchase something that gives a little kickback and keeps the podcast on going with me of course is my co-host ryan what's going on huh? another week another podcast yeah we were just I, uh, counting where it was what episode are we, we were 329 right so we're yeah, getting up there yeah. We are get, we getting up to the episodes. We've been doing this for a while, so yeah. So yeah, it's always good to uh, jump on here every week and talk about tech. I was telling Ryan that I was falling asleep. He has G Fuel. <laughs> I just <laughs> yep. I I crushed the whole thing. And I haven't had it in a while either. It's always yes. good when you like haven't had it. Like if you're like either drinking coffee or drinking like a carbonated energy drink, and then you switch over and do like a G Fuel night. It's always like I don't know. Yes. Yeah. It's just good when you haven't had it. It's in a while, different. So. What uh? What flavor you have there? Uh, I think this is like the sour cherry. Okay, nice, nice. I saw a couple interesting new flavors just like, like recently, like on social media or something. They have some interesting new flavors, but G Fuel is always good, always solid, especially yeah. if you're uh, gaming or you're just having a late night or even in the morning instead of coffee, just hitting that G Fuel. So, but I am uh, I just have water because I just, just water crushed, tonight, huh? Yeah, I just crushed a G Fuel like a whole thing All of right. G Fuel. So. Uh, we should be good to go. So, of course, guys, this is a tech podcast, and we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of different topics. If you guys do want to follow along, you can go ahead and do that. We have our full show notes page that is uh, linked in the description of this video or in the show note or in the I guess the show notes, if you're listening to this later on audio, you can go ahead and do that and just see everything that we're going to be talking about this week. And the first product that we're going to be talking about is a CPU cooler. And I think <clears throat> now tell me if I have all these parameters right, Ryan, if you're, you know, you're a beginner builder, maybe you've built one or two systems for an air cooler, a CPU air cooler, like the most important things is one, I would say definitely easy to install. You want something that's really yep. easy to install and you want something that you can install inside your case where you don't have to take the motherboard out. I think that's super important. Obviously, yeah. cooling is is very important. I would say you need it to be better than a stock cooler, like than the, than the stock Intel cooler or the stock AMD cooler. Um, and then it can't sound like a rocket ship taking off like it has to be decently quiet right yeah i think those like i don't know i don't know if i'm missing anything i think those are important like looks to some people are important right and we all like a cooler yeah. that looks nice but yeah ease of installation i've had some coolers i've installed and you're like oh are you kidding me i have to take the back of the motherboard out or at least hopefully you've got a case where you have access to the back of the motherboard but it's still kind of a pain if you have to like hold a bracket in there mm -hmm. and like reach around to to get it on there um so yeah, I, I definitely agree with uh you know an easy to install um, cooler is always nice, um, yeah one that doesn't rattle or make a bunch of noise is nice, uh, yeah I think you hit hit the nail on the head, yeah so we took a look at the Thermaltake UX two hundred and this is their take on the low cost air cooler, just around thirty bucks I think it's like thirty two ninety nine thirty three ninety nine right now on Amazon, um, MSRP is thirty dollars. Um, and it's a pretty good cooler overall. Uh, single tower, uh, ARGB fan, 120 millimeter ARGB fan, four heat pipes. Um, and then we can take a look at the cooler here. It's, like I said, it's, you know, your typical standard tower cooler, you know. Yep. Yeah, it's just, you know, all black, uh, which, which makes it look decently nice in your system as well. It doesn't have a crazy, like, crazy finishes that we've seen on some other high-end coolers, but you do get like a little thermal take logo here at the top um, Four heat pipes, as I say, and these are direct touch heat pipes, meaning that the heat pipes will make direct contact with your CPU. Um, you can go ahead and, you know, and see that right there. Now, when it comes to installation, it is incredibly easy um, with all of our installations of CPU coolers. We do them outside of the case, but this is one that you can, easily do inside your system like it's really that easy um so they give you this bracket uh that you can see right here it's just a plastic bracket that goes around yeah, this is for intel uh installation but they give you this plastic bracket that you know you kind of just set on top of your cpu and then you get these little plastic little push pins that kind of push down in 
Um, and you can see that on the uh, the little bracket, there's like a, a section for 11 5X and 11 7X. Um, so depending on, you know, which Intel uh, motherboard you're putting this on, you know, that's kind of where those go. And that pops, like I said, you just push this little push pin down through your motherboard. And then you use these little, uh, they're again, they're like these kind of rubberish push pins that you push down in and that locks the bracket in place. It's super, super easy. Again, this can totally be done inside your system. And then, you know, you install your uh, thermal paste, which does come, I'm, I'm kind of, it did not come in a syringe. It came in this little baggie, which I had yeah, like a, a one-time use, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but then all you do is you just place the cooler. And again, you can do it with the fan installed on the front. You don't have to remove the fan or anything. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's almost like I said, the, the mounting system is very much just like in a typical AMD mounting system with two little, uh, I guess, you know, hinges here on the side that you lock in and that's it. It's that yeah, I was going to say, this looks like it would, that would fit on a AMD system without that bracket. Is that true? Yeah. Or I'm pretty sure probably? that the, the AMD installation is you just put it on, you put just, it on top. You just clip it on. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You just clip it on. Um, we've seen a couple other coolers that have this almost this exact same, um, you know, mounting system here. Um, so yeah, it's again, it would be super easy either way. Intel AMD, incredibly easy. Um, as you can see, 100% memory clearance. So if you do have RGB memory, not going to cover your memory up or anything like that. You won't have to worry about fan clearance or anything like that. It's not going to cover any of the slots. Um, as you can see, just, you know, um, super, like I said, super incredibly easy installation. Um, and then the RGB lighting. So it's a standard three pin ARGB connection. There is no controller. So you have to plug it into your motherboard. So your motherboard needs to have a three pin addressable as you know, the last, I don't know how many generations of standard motherboard, uh, or I guess you would say enthusiast motherboard. Uh, they do like, oh, this is an a Z490 board, which obviously had the connection. So you connect it and you can easily um, control the RGB lighting through your motherboard software super easy to do the lighting is you know it's, again it's your typical argb fan here and um for testing um it didn't do as great we'll go through temperatures first so we run um idle tests of course taken on the windows 10 desktop um as you can see it pretty again a lot of the other coolers are like a little bit higher end but still not the best um you know, it's, it hovers around 32, which is close to the bottom of our testing. And then our first load test, uh, we run the A to 64 system stability test for one hour um, with just CPU only selected. So there's a bunch of different things you can select in the stability yeah. test. We just select CPU um, and it's, you know, four degrees hotter than the next uh, cooler, which again, it's it's not the biggest cooler, single fan. Um but you can kind of see that right there. And then under low temperature, again, it's six degrees hotter than a, a bunch of the other coolers that we've tested as well. Um, you know, so I would say that the performance isn't necessarily there um, compared to other coolers that are, you know, 10 to $15 more expensive. I mean, this is $34. Um, we just reviewed like this, the Scythe, uh, Mugen five rev C, which is just around 50 bucks. Um, it performs much, much better. Um, so I, I would say the performance just really isn't great. And this would be a fine cooler for like core I three, core I five, even core I seven. Um, but I would not recommend this cooler for core I nine, uh, or rise nine or anything like that, but more the, mid-range cpus this would be a good cooler to you know that you know that you could use over the stock cooler noise levels are fine it, the noise you know it's a single fan it's not going to be all that loud so you really don't have to worry about that um so yeah so i just i gave it a seven seven out of ten just because the performance wasn't there i think you know one of those major criterias is really you know it's good performance and we have seen Affordable coolers, most notably Hyper 212 from Cooler Master, perform much better than this. You know what I mean? Um, so it's, 
again in the hyper 212 series is around the same price um we haven't tested one of the newer hyper 212s and, and i think the last one we did was like two years ago um but yeah i just gave it seven times i just didn't think the performance was there um okay. yeah it's just it's kind of I, I was I was expecting just a little bit better performance out of this cooler. But if you are looking for a cooler that's incredibly easy to install, um, great for beginner. And again, if you're running Core i3, Core i5, Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, even sometimes Ryzen 7, Core i7, it will be a good cooler. But there are a lot of, you know, you just jump up another ten dollars. There are a lot better options out there. Um, so just something to definitely go ahead and keep in mind. So. Where do you, where do you think the lack of cooling comes from you think it was like they could have done better with like larger heat pipes or maybe more heat pipes yeah i, I think there's some pretty big like gaps between the heat pipes so they could have fit like a fifth one in there or maybe a sixth no it would have added probably a little bit of cost but they might have been able to get a decent amount more performance think, you know what i mean yeah i think it has a lot to do so you know ryan's obviously talking about the the heat pipes here um yeah, I mean, there, there's not a ton of space, obviously. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with the fin stack. If you look at the fin stack, um, the fins are are decently spread out. Like, they're not grouped together as close, which, again, that this, you know, having them spaced out allows for better airflow, but there's less surface area if you have less fins. Sure. Um so yeah, I think that might have something to do with it. It's just kind of again with with these single tower coolers, it's it's you know, you're kind of stuck with what yeah. you have. Yeah. And again, I think this is more geared towards mid-range CPUs. This is not something like you're not going to Yeah, it's not. You a- know, put this on a Ryzen 9 or like a a Core i9. I mean, you're going to, you know, load up a Noct- if you want an air cooler like a Noctua or or a really big beefy cooler master cooler. Um it does its job, but again, I, I think the performance just could have been a little bit better overall. Yeah. Um, and old man's in the chat. Uh, I know he's been I've been missing the chat, but uh, yeah, he says uh, he has the Hyper Two One Two Plus, um, which is just, like I said, the Hyper Two One Two series has been like the kind of if you're not doing the stock cooler and you want an inexpensive air cooler, that's kind of what I've suggested over the past couple of years. We haven't tested a new one yet. Um, and he said the Hyper 212 Evo V2 air cooler is $42.99. So again, $10 more. Um, based on my experience, the performance would be a little bit better. But like I said, it's still not a bad cooler. Again, if you're trying to save some money, it will definitely get the job done. And you do get the ARGB lighting, which a lot of these other coolers don't have in the same price range. So you get a little bit of, you know, it's just some... Everybody's buying a case with a tempered glass side panel. So... Yeah. Getting just something to kind of show off your system is, is nice there as well. So go ahead and check out the review if you're interested. Um, I was just, you know, just a little bit disappointed in the cooler. Uh, we'll move on from there to Case Mod Friday. And I've never heard of, uh, yeah, your kids watch Disney. Yeah, I, yeah you know. Uh, they did not watch Moon Knight. Okay. I, I don't know what Moon Knight is. I've never heard <laughs> of it. I like this build, though. I saw this build, and I was like, never heard of the series. But I like this build because it shows... That you can, ha- <clears throat> let's, excuse me. Let's see you it. Can, let's see it. Bring yeah, it you you can have a decent build with not a whole lot of modding. You know, standard AIO, which we all have. Or, you know, which you can easily do, and you can make a really good looking build. Um, so this is based on Moon Knight, which I, is a Disney um, TV show. Um, lots of painting in this. They painted the um, graphics card. Uh, part of the case is painted, which we'll show you. But like again, internally, it's just a system. It's just like my system. It's a system with an AIO in it, with like matching colors on a lot of yep. the components. You know what I mean? And they match the 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 painting that they did with the individually sleeve cabling. You know what I mean? This is a Corsair case, I believe, possibly. Um, this is like know. the everyday man's mod, right? Yeah, that's why I like it. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel uh, some of these other mods that we showcase like as amazing as they are. They're unobtainable for a lot of us, either whether it's cost, access to the tools, just the mm-hmm. skill set. Right. But with this, I feel like, yeah, I could probably paint a GPU and, you know, make it look like this and I can get some colored cables and I can figure out how to get uh, Moon Knight on the screen of the LCD. Uh, on the cooler and things like that so uh yeah 
there's the painting that they did oh, on the side, cool. which I think is really cool. The opposite, um, you know, and that's that that that's pretty cool. I think that looks pretty um, good. Yeah, yeah, did some. It looks like this is like an extra piece that they kind of put put together and everything. Um, old man in the chat says, "Moon." He read the Moon Knight comics in the eighties. Uh, he thought it was Marvel's answer to Batman, just not as cool. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Um, it I mean, the character looks really cool, but I don't. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just like I said, just some painting um, and just some extra, you know, little things that that were done to just give it this. And again, you're right. Like, this is something that I would have done. Like they painted the IO covers and stuff, just like kind of easy stuff to do that can really if you do it correctly and you kind of match everything. It looks like I said, it looks pretty good to me. You know what I mean? Um just like I said, it, it's you don't have to do, and everybody wants that. You know, I want this crazy water hard line cooled system that they just, you know, they think about it and they just never end up doing it. Whereas, like this, you can kind of do something that's going to really make your system stand out that is very obtainable for, I would say, the average human like like you and I, right? Yeah, you know what no, I mean? For yeah. Sure. It's, looking at this price list i'm not going god that's like overly expensive right this it looks like yeah. just a, a straight up case build parts list with some you know maybe 3d printed or cnc pieces here and there or maybe just some some pieces you could find on etsy or somewhere to that it fit well with the build yeah no this is mm -hmm. cool yeah very cool so um yeah go ahead and check it out the builder was uh phenom design we have his facebook listed there so go ahead and check it out like i said pretty cool um and especially oh he has a video too so we have the video oh. in the uh in the article as well if you want to check it out and like i said subscribe to his uh his youtube and check out his facebook page you know give some support to the less known builders out there so so yeah that moves us on to news and there's going to be a lot of news like this week, uh, Gamescom is going on in Germany right now. A um, lot of announcements, a lot of things. Um, so we have some of the early, some early things uh, that were kind of dropped, but we'll get to most of it next week. So it's kind of a shorter news list this week, um, but we'll jump right into it. So the Intel Arc A380, we've been talking about this. Uh, we talked about it, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, that you could pre-order it on Newegg. Uh, it is now available on Newegg. You can go right now and go ahead and buy it. Uh, $139.99. This is the Challenger version, uh, Challenger ITX version from ASRock. That is currently the only version of this graphics card that you can get in America uh, or in the United States. And I think in Europe too. I'm not sure, but I believe this is the only one that you can, I mean, you can import like the Gunner one, I guess, into Europe easier than you could the United States, but I believe like at retail, this is the only one that you can get in both America and Europe. Um, so if you're want to check out what Intel is all about, again, it's $139.99 um, and you can get it. You know, it looks like they have a decent amount of stock in. So. So, yeah. Cool. Would you I, I, uh, we talked about this before. I like I want the Intel version, like if I, you know, like, like a, I, yeah, a founder's edition type. Yeah. Even though this is like, again, you kind of want to want to check this out like i really want the intel founders edition card not the not the other i mean I, I say we call it a founders edition that's obviously an nvidia term but yeah the, the factory yeah card yeah so but yeah it's available so if you want to go ahead and pick it up you definitely can do that i just uh, expect this thing to show up in all sorts of pre-built at best buy and yeah and places, i think that's right? that's kind of what intel wanted to do initially i think you know, the pre-built market is great. And, and again, if you're looking for something that is a little bit better than, you know, the built-in graphics on Intel, you know, or like a APU from AMD to get a pre-built to be pretty affordable, that's the way to go. And I think that, you know, for, it's going to take a little while for drivers and all that kind of stuff to get better. Uh, but I think they could, you can put together some pretty affordable systems you know, for, you know, with the arc a 380. So we'll, you'll see a bunch. Yeah. I assume when you go to Best Buy, you'll see a ton of systems with it in it. Cause it's just yeah, pretty soon here. Yeah. Just makes sense. Uh, moving over to the CPU side, it looks like somebody's selling a Ryzen 5 7600 engineering sample on the Chinese big old engineering block. sample across the top there. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, this thing looks rough too, man. It's it's gone it's through some up. stuff. Yeah, it's been through some shit. That's <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah, so it's been, it's being sold on the uh, Chinese black market. Uh, doesn't really say much about CPU. It just says uh, four point four gigahertz base clock, uh, which is actually s- slightly lower than the four point seven gigahertz uh, that that we know that it sh- it should be. But I mean, that's that's what this is like. Again, I mean, we've seen renders and some other pictures of this, but this is one that's been used. Do you, is it like down at the bottom here? Is that like thermal paste right here? Well, like, I and I saw it up at the top, the top right corner next to um, on the like PCB. Right it almost looks like spray paint. Yeah. Like overspray, right? It. Who knows? But I. I you can see thermal my, paste, right? Yeah, you can see like. I anticipate and... that uh, being a problem or maybe and maybe not a problem problem maybe not be the right word but uh just a mess for people right i think if again a lot of people are like one time one time right i'm putting yeah, my you're doing it once oh. and you're never doing it again. yeah but like for reviewers or people who are testing cpu cooler yep. specifically i mean you know even just with like the like the intel cpus that we use for cpu coolers i mean it it's a pain to like get in there and clean it all out and this yep. is just looks like it's going to be worse i feel you know yeah. I don't know. Well, and if you oh, got yeah. anything like a that has any uh, conductivity, right? You don't want to get it on any of those exposed pieces. I'm guessing, <laughs> right? Yeah, I wouldn't think, but I yeah, it's uh, who knows? It's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. And you would think that they would just cover that, right? Like why? Or maybe it, maybe it's sealed by something and yeah, a clear, a clear coat, yeah, or something. So, in any case, uh, pretty interesting to see. Um, we're getting close here, guys. We're we're getting close to to launch on these, so Definitely. pretty ex- pretty excited. We'll probably see a couple more of these pop up over the next couple of weeks. Um, now we did talk about Ryzen seven thousand series being delayed. Um, according to some forms, uh, Chip Hell forms, uh, it's because and this is I hate this. It's because of a BIOS issue. Uh, when original Ryzen launched, that was one of the big issues with was BIOS issue. Um. So hopefully, like I said, it, it's not something crazy. Um, you know, a, a major BIOS issue could be really bad because again, all the the motherboards that are that have that are already out have a BIOS on them, and the new BIOSes have to be loaded. Right. Uh, it, you know, that's you that's box the stuff up already. You know? Yeah, a lot of these products are already boxed up, uh, especially the motherboards. So um, if there is a BIOS issue, it's it's not good. And that's um, the worst is it's kind of like in a game where they launch it and then they're like, oh, you've got the game, but now you got to download another like 10 gig day one patch, yeah. right? It's like, oh, you got your new system. Make sure you put the current BIOS on it. Uh, otherwise, you know, whatever the case might be for a, for an issue there. Yeah. And then if it is a BIOS issue that it can that can be a whole mess of other things as well. And it's like, again, first generation Ryzen, it's like we're getting BIOS update yeah. after BIOS update and it still didn't fix certain things and you had to run certain memory like it. It wasn't the greatest launch initially. Um, so hopefully that's not the case with Ryzen 7000. We don't think hopefully this delay will allow them to fix whatever this may be. Um, this is a rumor, but uh, again, it's pretty, most of these leaks that we've been seeing are pretty accurate with what's kind of going on with, um, you know, with these launches. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully it it was always, I I remember a couple of launches and I don't remember, I've had it on the GPU side too, where like you get a, you get like a graphics card, like a week before it comes out, you know, you get it, you're running all your tests and then like, a day before the launch, they're like, "Oh, we have a new driver. Yeah. You have to re- you have to retest." I'm like, "Okay, I'm going to retest 30 games." Yeah, <laughs> like, you're like, "Guess I'm not sleeping it, tonight." Yeah, 24 hours, and we I've had it with CPUs too. They're like, "Oh, we have a new BIOS that fixes this," and I'm like, "I literally just spent the last week testing this, so uh, we'll see how how all that goes as well." Um, new super fast Lexar drive, uh, which I'm pretty sure I have here. Um, I will be reviewing this coming up. So they announced their professional NM800 Pro. This is a Gen 4. Um, and we're seeing a, a lot of companies come out with one with a heatsink, one without the heatsink. The one with the heatsink is primarily for uh, PlayStation. 
uh, or if you want the heat sink, but it seems like every company now is coming out with, you know, heat sink, non heat sink version, which I actually really like, uh, because again, a lot of, uh, the kind of first run gen four drives that were specifically made for PlayStation are really great drives, but they come with the heat sink and most PC users don't want the heat sink because we've talked about this, like, they oh, we have so many great heat sinks on our motherboards and it just messes up the whole look of the board if you don't use the heat sink uh that comes with the board so uh yeah so this is 7500 megabytes a second read 60 6500 megabytes a second write um 12 nanometer controller on there i, I think it looks pretty good too i, I think the heat sink actually looks decently yeah good like too. It. Yep. um it's, it's definitely not what i expected when i saw this headline like Lexar, yeah. I was like, oh, this is just gonna be like, oh, whatever. But okay, all right, yeah. Um, so yeah, so pretty excited. I believe, like I said, I I got a bunch of boxes in today, and I believe this is in one of those boxes. Cool. So we'll have this review up. Um, but yeah, the I don't think there is pricing just yet on this, but it, you know, it should be like I said, you know, kind of what you expect um up to two terabyte hopefully they come out with a four terabyte though you would think these new drives would get i think we're getting to that point where you're gonna see i think you're gonna you, we're gonna get rid of the 512 like you're just not gonna get 512 so you think one two and four will be like the three because typically we would have 512 one and two now we're just gonna do one two and four hopefully um as things kind of you know yeah. that for like a professional like for the higher end drives i would say for like the you know the mid-range drives you'll still get that even sometimes you still might even a still get a, two, a 256 a 512 a one uh and maybe a two but i think with the higher end drives you'll hopefully we'll just get to one two and four um but yeah pretty excited for that drive as well um and then gigabyte they sh they showed off and this thing is super super fast um, they showed off their Gen 5 uh, SSD. This is their, uh, it's called their Aorus Gen 5 10,000. And I assume the 10,000 meets, you know, has to do with the speed. Um, but they posted the, the crystal disk mark. I don't know if you guys can see it, wow. but uh, sequential read 12,453.9 megabytes a second. That's read. And then sequential write is 10,074.5 megabytes a second so 12 gigabytes a second read 10 gigabytes a second right um okay yeah and yeah so i'll take two yeah super super fast gen 5 obviously um and again they, they posted this picture of like a render of what the you know it's just an m.2 drive obviously but uh they posted the actual crystal disk mark uh which is pretty cool to see so um this one will be up to four terabytes which would be oh man having that and you know a couple of those in your system yeah. gen 5 yeah uh it'll be definitely really really good to see uh this stuff come out so these will all some of these should be being announced at gamescom and a little bit later in the year um so yeah i'm really excited to just go to the next level it just seems like we just got to gen 4 and oh, gen yeah. 5's coming you know yeah so i'm pretty excited for the speed so so yeah, I know Ryan, you have some stories here. I'll put your yeah, thanks. Yeah. So I've got a couple here we'll cover. Uh, first up is some uh, kind of an interesting pairing of uh, I guess nerd universes, right? Like mechanical yeah. keyboards, custom mechanical keyboards, and Lord of the Rings. So we've got Drop pairing up with Lord of the Rings to present a an Elvish version and a um, not Orcish, but um, dwarven version of the uh control keyboard i do i don't want to interrupt you but oh, i ahead. do have to say and i actually have this keyboard uh oh, which one i believe it's the i haven't opened it yet it's the okay. green one for like lord of the rings massive franchise right massive franchise yeah yeah keyboard yeah, uh, th this uh, I agree. I think this is a very niche um, consumer yeah. market, right? I think your crossover PC, like everybody. Uh, okay, I can't say everybody, but uh, most people probably enjoy Lord of the Rings, right? And you've we've probably seen a couple Lord of the Rings themed builds, even. But I can't imagine that there's a huge 
demand for this custom keyboard. I could see maybe selling a keycap set, right, as a drop, but a, a, a whole dedicated uh, keyboard for it, maybe not. But the you know design what? is not. I mean, the keycaps, yeah, but like the keycaps. But other than that, it's a pretty standard design, right? Yeah, You've got that's an what aluminum I mean. base um, yeah. available in two colors. You've got the the dark gray um, base for the dwarvish version and then the uh, kind of like light mint green for uh, the elvish yeah um, some cool keycap designs so i like the color scheme on i i like i favor the dwarvish um okay um look uh the most i think it it just looks looks cooler um it's a 10 keyless design with 87 keys um they're using holy panda x switches um i haven't ever heard of those but i'm not I've heard that. I've heard really good things about those, actually. Nice. Okay. Um, uh, USB connectivity or USB Type C connectivity. I'm not sure that it comes with a USB Type C cable. So, um, I'll, I I, I'll there, open right? it this week. Uh, okay. Like I said, I, I got a bun- bunch of boxes in, and this was also yeah. one of the things. So, I would be surprised if they didn't have like a custom cable that came along with it, at least in a similar color scheme. I, I could see them doing that. Um, yeah. But this is going to be for sale for $170 each. Um, they'll be available for pre-order starting. Actually, they're already up for pre-order and they'll start shipping and arriving in early October. So um, I think it's cool, but I just don't see the a huge market for this. And like crossover. you would think this would coincide with, is there like a Lord of the a Rings movie, movie or a show? There is a Amazon Prime, I think has... <sighs> A new Lord of the Rings show, or right like now. a game, like it would coincide with a game, right? Right. Yeah, they, yeah. I think Amazon Prime, like I said, has a show out right now. Because I know um, we did, we we did have Lord of the Rings, like mouse mats, and maybe a mouse from somebody like years ago. I remember that. This is the first keyboard. Um, and if you're worried about it, they do have uh, English uh, uh, legends on the keycaps, not just uh, uh, Elvish and and yeah. uh, symbols. <laughs> thankfully. Yeah. For those of us that aren't uh, up on our, well, obviously I'll let you guys know how I like it. We'll we'll have yeah. a full review of that keyboard coming soon. Now th- so now this next product I'm like super like excited for. This is really cool. It's a, uh-huh. another keyboard type design, the NGS Shrimp Gaming Keyboard, right? And she, I I saw this thing and I was like, what in the world? I thought it was kind of ridiculous at first, but I got I got to thinking and like sitting here at my keyboard and putting my hand, you know, where I would normally place it to game. Yeah. I'm like, all right, this this might work. It, it's missing for me anyways the g right i use g for grenade to switch over to grenade who uh, are you in-game. who does that <laughs> i do okay we'll talk later <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> who are you who does this <laughs> anyhow uh so we have this like two-piece uh gaming keyboard and wrist rest design available in multiple um colorways and designs i love this one with the kind of graffiti stickers yeah on the wrist wrist rest r- super colorful um the whole idea, I design. believe, of these is like, you know, you have a keyboard, like we, mm-hmm. I have this big keyboard here. Like if you're traveling, right. you don't like it's kind of a pain in the ass to take even like is a six, even a 65, 60, 75 uh, percent. And if you're somebody who uses even a larger than that, like to take your whole keyboard with you is an ideal. So the whole yeah. idea of this keyboard or keypad um, is obviously to cut down on space and just make it easy. And again, for specifically made for gaming. Like if you look at it, it's, it's going to, you're not going to be typing out any emails or very many messages and words with the limited amount of letters here. Yeah. It's basically the far left side of your keyboard. W a S D. They have like a half of a space bar, which I think is perfect because again, like I'm just like looking at my thumb where it sits on my space bar. If I'm playing a game like WASD and it sits right on that side. So yeah, like, absolutely. This does seem very ideal. It has a couple knobs at the top as well. Um, yeah, so I think got, this yeah, is. The... Yeah. Like very, very much ideal. You could, I mean, it would be interesting to see if like you could just make this your full-time gaming keyboard, right? Yeah. yeah 25 keys. Uh, you've got the two switches up at the top, which you can uh, customize or use as in-game, uh, you know, controls there's no software required which is kind of interesting i was hoping there would be some software with this so that you could maybe do some more customized features there might be these, third these party styles. software that you could use right. for yeah, it you could customize um, for that uh but magnetically connected um wrist rest as well so you can kind of snap that on and off if you don't want it or just need to like make it a little smaller package yeah. for tr- for traveling um gateron g pro mechanical switches cherry profile keycaps 
RGB lighting, Type C connectivity. Um, yeah, no, it, this is pretty sweet. Uh, I do like it that they came out with the different versions. If you can bring that picture up again. Um, yeah, yeah, multiple. Yeah, the color different color, colorways. They all look good. You, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just like a good overall product. Like I could totally see myself using this, like even just at home as like the key. You know the like what I use instead of my normal keyboard. Like I could totally see it. Yeah. Um, and again, small enough, but, you can fit it in a backpack. Like I like that. And yeah. it makes it nice. Like I'm someone that I use a, a, a TKL Corsair keyboard and I angle it just a little bit, right. For my hands like this makes it even cause now the way I have it laid out, right. Uh, it just takes up a little, little more room than a, a standard TKL when it's facing straight. This just takes up so much less space, gives you a little more room. You don't have to worry about bumping into the side of your keyboard with your, your mouse hand or anything. So anyhow, I think, yeah, I think this is pretty sweet. Yeah. I like that. It was pretty cool. Pretty interesting product. So hopefully maybe we'll get one of those into review as well. It'd be kind of cool. And then last up, Asus has their ROG mesh Wi-Fi system. This looks I, to me, it's like, is this on the wall in a bathroom to dry my hands? Is it like <laughs> uh, a, a health pack panel in some futuristic movie that's like up against the wall, you know, to like yeah. get health. It's so, it's so nuts looking, but uh, I, I think this is pretty sweet. Um, so we've got the Wi-Fi six uh, mesh uh, system here from Asus, and it can deliver up to 10,000 megabits per second uh, across two five gigahertz uh, bands and one 2.4 band. So nice. they're saying it can cover up to 5,800 square feet. Obviously that's going to kind of uh, depend on where you place it in your house, right? If, if you're putting yeah. it in a basement and you've got a two story house or uh, wherever your internet connection comes in. Um, but uh, yeah, up to 5,800 square feet. Um, it has multiple gigabit wired connections for the, um, uh, for your wired connections. And it has a 2.5 gigabit WAN and LAN nice. aggregation is available as well. So, uh, yeah, 2.5 gig WAN. I wish I had the option to go up to those types of speeds for my WAN connection. But, That's what uh, I have. I have an ASUS. Uh, I have a the. I have an ROG router. Right. And yeah. I I love that it has that. I mean, actually, uh, yeah. I, well, I just wish I had an ISP that would yeah. offer me those speeds. Right. Yeah. Um, this so is yeah, uh, it, for you guys. This is the. This is called the ROG Rapture GT6 um very cool yeah, design insane. and it's nice that it's you get the two color options you know what i mean uh you get the white or the black uh ryan has the yep. black up on the screen and i i assume i'm assuming that the rog logo there lights up and then you can you I can change so. the colors even on mine that it you know you can change you can change it's all rgb you can change the colors yep. and stuff so uh yeah i'm a huge fan of mesh uh i use a i don't use this like as nice of a mesh system in in my uh, two bedroom apartment, but it's just like so good to have, uh, especially if you're in a home, uh, especially a multi-level home. Uh, mesh yep. is is really really great, and um, it's it's good to see ROG. I'm a big fan of their networking products. Uh, like I said, I have an ROG uh, Wi-Fi six router. They have a, a Nighthawk. That's okay. I think it was a, just a G or maybe an N router. It's I haven't you know. I haven't been using it in a couple of years, but I've, I was always happy with its performance and the interface and everything. So yeah, um, that's, that's one that I usually will recommend to family and friends that ask, like I used, it used to be like the Lexus WRT 54 G, right? Like that's what you would always, it would be like yeah. a WRT device that you would. I think recommend. I still have a couple of those like in storage, like in a box, <laughs> but, yeah. but I've kind of moved on to being like, Oh, let's see what Asus has and is available. Cause it's usually they're, they need it like that day because there's broke and they went, you know, dead. So you got to find them something at a, at a Best Buy or, or somewhere local. And if Asus is available, I, I typically point folks towards that nowadays, but uh, no, it's yeah. cool. Like yeah. These. Very, very cool. I don't know if they, did they list pricing on this? They didn't. Uh, uh, no. Uh, available at Q4. the end of, yeah. At the end of the year. So yeah. So I'm perfect. guessing. Expensive. Uh, well, I don't want to guess. Yeah. It's going to be expensive though. Probably two to $400 range. Yep. I'd guess somewhere in there, but very cool. Um, I, I just, I mean, I like those white ones. They would like, cause everything you guys can kind of see my office, but like everything in here is white. And then just putting the white, um, you know, like this, like the white up in there would be very, very cool. I think it'd be, yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, I wish we had something to give us some size perspective. Yeah, because you don't really. I wanted know. to see like the back and maybe some of the wired connections. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll get pictures at some point. Let me see sure. if they have. Uh, they might have it because this is part of their Gamescom thing. Okay. So I don't know. Yeah, no, it's not on their website. Um, no, yeah, it's not on there. There's some pretty cool Gamescom stuff too. Um, just check out like Asus's social media. They have a bunch of stuff on there that you guys can check out. But, but yeah, I'm I'm excited for these. It's it's so cool to see ROG like become ev- like there's ROG product for everything now, like literally yeah. everything, which is really cool. Yeah, so. I mean, and they're, they're good. It's with, it's with it's, Asus it's, on some stuff. So yeah, or not Asus, but uh, IKEA. Yeah, and it's the thing is, is like most of the ROG products are actually good too. It's not like they just slap the ROG name on it and it's like some crap product. The IKEA stuff, eh, you know, yeah, but like so most stupid. of the, the the hardware, actual hardware related products have always been good. Um, whether it's you know obviously the motherboards, but like the networking products, the storage products, they're all really good. So you know, pretty uh, like I said, pretty excited to just keep on seeing more ROG stuff. Um, coming next week, I'm talking about gaming. I'm taking a look at two gaming-related products. Uh, they're completely different. Uh, first, I'll be taking a look at the Adata XPG Alpha wireless gaming mouse. So XPG, they're making mice. This is their uh, Alpha. Um, pretty simple. Um, you know, uh, you can do Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz. So it's going to come with a dongle, or you can use it via USB. Has some RGB lighting um, in here, as you can see as well. Um, they got the type C, which is always good. And you can see the front is lifted off. If you look at that front image, it's a little, you know, I'm going to see how comfortable it is because I'm pretty, I like my lightweight mice. So we'll see how this one goes. Uh, 60 hour, 60 hour battery life. Of course you have arm run switches on there. Um, so we'll go ahead and see, uh, what that mouse is all about. And I'm really, really excited for this product. Um, so creative sent over their sound blaster Katana V2, which is actually a soundbar. Um, but I'm going to see if a soundbar will replace my n- normal speakers on my computer. Um, while, again, most people think soundbar, they think for your TV, but this is more or less designed for gamers. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll see how it sounds, you know. Um, you can kind of see, you know, what it looks like right there. It obviously it has RGB lighting, but <laughs> really excited to check this product out as well. Um, like I said, see if I, you know, when like when you're building your system, you never think of a sound bar for no. like you think no. of speakers. Like you're like, oh, I'm going to get some yeah. speakers. So we're going to see how this sounds. If it's something that I would suggest for, um, you know, I can't go over here. Um, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I don't even think, you know speakers i've had the same set of 4.1 surround sound but just yeah. in a 2.1 setup for uh like 20 years i'm not even kidding <laughs> and it's a creative set but yeah like yeah this this is cool though i like i like the uh, multiple input uh options uh, yeah that yeah, the versatility that. of it so yeah so we'll see kind of what that's all about as well and uh as we come to the end here we talk about just random tech stuff you did anything tech related this week ryan no, I think last week did I talk about setting up an Unraid server? I think I had set it up. Yeah, you like had the said day before. Were... I tore it down already, but <laughs> it's because I'm planning to rebuild it with like some like finalized hardware. So nice. Um, I, I saw a case that got released, uh, or at least was showing as new, and I don't think I'd ever seen um, from Silverstone. So I'm gonna look into to that. Um, so I had to get the other one torn down. It was. I had put it in the case that you have the uh, Corsair. Um, what is it? I forget the name of your case that you have right now. Your the 680X? Case. Yes. I had a 680X just additionally in my room. And that case is, it's large <laughs> to just have in your room. So yeah, I had to, had to tear that down for a little while. Uh, I, uh, I've just been working on review stuff. Um, shot a ton of B-roll for a new video, which I'm pretty pumped about. It just, oh. Every time I shoot B-roll, I'm like, oh, it looks so good. Even though, like, people will see it for, like, five seconds. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're cutting it up and, like, taking it. Yeah. yeah. Shoot, like, a, shoot, like, 200 gigs worth of footage for, like, a 
you know, 10 minute video. So, but yeah, just well, working on that stuff. Um, we were talking we about CES too. Yeah. So we just booked, uh, our place for CES. Uh, CES is officially January 5th through 8th, uh, right. of this upcoming year. Uh, we typically book in a he- ahead because everything gets real crazy. Um, but we'll be there, uh, the second through the ninth in Vegas for CES, obviously covering the show. Uh, we haven't been able to make it the past couple of years because of COVID. Um, so hopefully there's no issues in between then and now. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get back out there, check out products, um, give you guys kind of the, you know, kind of yeah. what's going on and, you know, just have some fun in Vegas, see all of our friends from all different tech sites we know. And yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. We got it locked down. So everything's like locked down. Good to go. It's coming together. Yeah. And this year, so, you know, previously like i was living in pittsburgh so i would obviously fly to vegas but now that i live in san diego i'm going to drive because i'm going to bring my whole main system we're going to bring a podcasting setup like we're going to have it'll be it it would just make things a lot easier to drive and have all this gear that we can actually use there not like just bring the gear that i can fit in a suitcase now we'll bring a ton of gear and kind of be good to go whether we're doing podcasts video stuff like obviously video editing will be a lot easier because we're not doing it on a laptop so um so yeah pretty pumped for that um yeah so yeah so do we have uh if, if old man wants to give us the the deals for he always uh, knows he's always on the uh, on the yeah the, the, ep- the epic game deals and i saw something on twitter there's a sale i don't think it's humble bumble or hum- humble bundle what's the other one there's some other deal going on. Uh, oh, this is sound like a good one. Doom so, 64. Doom 64 is free on Epic till tomorrow at 10 a.m. Ring of Pain will also be free. So that sounds like fun. But there's some other. Maybe it's like G2A. I don't think there's like some summer sale or something going on on one of these websites. Uh, no, back to school sale. I forget. Yeah, so there's like a back to school sale on G2A. So that's G2A.com. I saw that on social media. Uh, if you want to check that out uh, as far as games. And like I said, Old Man said Doom 64 is free on Epic. Always use, you know, you don't, may not use that Epic Games launcher that much, but you just open it up and get the free games. And that's kind of what you do. So, uh, and if you just logged in on the website, you don't even have to open the launcher if you want to. So, but you do get free games. Um, so yeah, yeah, so we're gonna jump off here. We're gonna go over to Twitch. Of course, Wednesday nights means gaming nights. Uh, Ryan will have the stream up. He is your host over there. So <laughs> tell him, get in his face. Tell him to kill people. You know, I'll be on there as well, but I won't be streaming. Ryan is the uh, yep. the head. Game hopefully streamer. this week we don't have any audio issues. I, I was kind of messing with my setup tonight, and I think it was it's good. Yeah. It's so good. Ryan does this thing where like week. he all, he just never has the same audio settings. I don't know why. Uh, when he's doing his stream. So, uh, but yeah, we'll be over there. Twitch.tv forward slash think computers. Uh, thanks to everybody for coming out. It's old man. Good to see you here in the chats. Uh, like every week, you're typically always here. Uh, thanks to everybody who listens later. And of course we will see you guys next.